In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a premium series recorder from Avalonix to get email alerts. Email alerts have kind of become difficult because Gmail, which is the major email provider, no longer lets you sell and send emails through a, a device such as your own recorder because they want to reduce the amount of spam that's out there. So you have to use the Gmail interface. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an Outlook email account to send email alerts from your security camera recorder. That is a premium series by Avalonix, which you can purchase here at CCTV Camera World. We already have a guide that we wrote a while back. It seems like people are having trouble following it, so we decided to make this video to help you follow this guide in video form. The guide explains how to set up all of these parameters for your email address that you may have from your Outlook account. Your Outlook account is really an Office 365 account. So you can go sign up for a free account from Outlook, use that to send emails from your NVR over to the same Outlook account or to another email address. In my case, I'm going to send it to my Gmail, which I'll show you in a second. So in this guide here, this is the main pertinent section where you have to fill in the email username and password and certain information that's in bold here. I'm going to discuss that as well. It's very important you get your email address correct and your password. Otherwise, this is not going to happen. And then once you set all that, you have to enable motion detection. In this video, I'm going to show you how to enable uh, smart detection events such as a tripwire or an intrusion alert to get an email alert that is more specific than regular motion detection. Here's an example of, it. in the end, what you'll get. Our tester NVR here sent us a motor vehicle alert. If I click on it, here's a picture. There's a motion, motion detected by a passing motor vehicle on the road in front of our uh, unit here. And then another alert that came by was for an effective human target, someone walking out of the office, and uh, it sent out an alert for that. So the first thing to do is log into the web interface. You have to type in your IP address for your NVR and then log into it with the correct username and password. I'm not in front of the NVR, I'm doing it over the local network. So this IP address is for mine, yours is gonna be different. Make sure you find that out by using our config tool or go and look at the easiest thing is look at your NVR, log into it, go into the network settings and figure out what its IP address is and then type that into a web browser. Once you're there, our premium series NVRs have a really good um, interface that loads up in any browser. I'm using Brave here. It's a Chromium browser, so it'll work in Chrome as well. Now, once you're logged in, you can go into your camera. And let me show you our camera what we're working with here to help you understand what kind of alert we're getting. You can double click. So we set up an alert here, and I'll show you the event. So the first thing you do is go set up your event. Second, you can go set up your email settings. Now, let me go there, there and show you how, how to do that. Go to network, go to email. And then here you need to fill out your email address information. For Outlook emails, you have to use smtp.office365.com. Right, I'm going to compare this side by side with the post we have online, which you can follow below this video. So this is where the this post is located. Here's a URL. So SMTP Office 365, port 587. That's what I've got. Uncheck anonymous. Enter the username for your email account. I have a tester email account. That's what it, the email address is. And then type in the password correctly. Don't copy and paste it. You have to type it in correctly. Then, and as a sender, same, use the same email address as the username here. Outlook emails require you to have the username at outlook.com. And the sender is the full email address. So these two are identical values. Encryption type has to be TLS. And the subject name, you can change this if you want to, to something else. I'm just leaving it as to be the generic. And then the attachment, you can actually click on the attachment to send a snapshot of the alert. This is the attachment. If you don't do that, you're not going to get a snapshot. Then the receiver, you could actually copy and paste it to be the same email address, or you can type in a different email address. This is another tester account that I have. I put that in there. You can subscribe to health email accounts if you want, and then press OK. 
you should say op get operations succeeded. Now that doesn't mean that, oh yeah, your email's working fine and that you're gonna get the email. It just means you submitted this data in there. It has no idea if your email username and password is good or not or everything's working well or not. So you can hit test to at least get a test email to see if your NVR, and it says test succeeded, that does mean it was able to send a test email out to this email address you put in the receiver. So I'm gonna go there, I got it here, and here we go. Tester burner says this is an event, it was a test. It was successful, awesome. So now I've set up the email account properly. A lot of people will get this wrong because they mistype information in their email or their password, or they come back to the screen and they change something and forget to re-enter the password. You have to re-enter the password to make sure it's correct and do not copy and paste passwords from anywhere. So that's the first portion of getting your email account set up. Now, in order to get alerts, you need to go through some several steps to enable an event to trigger an email alert going out to you. In my case, I'm using a PTZ to make this guide more robust for pretty much anybody who, used to, who wants to use a stationary security camera or a PTZ camera. What you don't have to do with a stationary camera is this. With a PTZ, you have to set a preset. So if you go to a certain spot, in the web menu, you can press two or one and hit add. I And then it'll add that location as a preset. In my case, I like to set, I already have a preset set for this demonstration at preset one. So you can actually change where your camera is pointing by typing the preset that you've already set by going there. And all you have to do to set a preset is you move the PTZ to a certain direction using the on-screen controls and basically type in the number and then hit add and it'll set that as a preset. Now I'm gonna go back to preset one. So for Pantel Zooms, you have to do that in order to do the next step. You don't have to do that, what I just did for stationary security cameras that are fixed and looking in one direction. The second thing you need to do is go to AI. And I'm going to do a, what's called an IVS rule. It's to detect vehicles or humans coming into a certain box. I already created an intrusion rule, which basically is a box covering this area. And another intrusion rule, which is covering this area. Now, in both of the rules, once you can, once you draw your rule, I'm just going to show you how to draw an example, just uh, for the sake of demonstration here. You can only draw the rule if you on a PTZ if you have the preset set, which I just did. On a stationary camera, you don't need to do presets. So once you're in this menu, click Add, and then you can draw a rule. There are different kinds of rules you can draw: crossing virtual boundaries, tripwire intrusion. It all depends on what your camera can do. This camera has a lot of different options. I'm just going to do it another intrusion rule. And I'm going to draw a box here. You just have to single click anytime something appears within this box. It'll trigger a motion alert. Now, once you're done draw drawing your rule, you right click and it completes drawing the rule. And then you have to hit save to save that rule. It says operation succeeded. That means it took my rule. Now, underneath here, you can select these parameters. I'm just going to select all of them. I want it to detect a vehicle that appears there. It crosses into the box, either in and out of the box, everything. I'm going to deselect human because I just want to send cars for this demonstration. And then target filter is basically, yes, you're, you're setting a target specifically for humans or motor vehicles. If you uncheck this, then it'll arbitrarily, if anything comes in there, even like Lee's moving or someone, th a bird comes in the view, it will detect that and send you an alert. So I'm going to detect only motor vehicles in this case. Schedule, make sure you select all and the period. It will basically then select all the time. Post record is how much recording you want after the event's been recorded. So I want 30 seconds of video recording. Which channel to record? This is camera one, so I'm selected automatically record channel one. Now, here is where you have to select send email. You can log it 
you can log the event so you can check your logs that you're actually seeing alerts happen and then you can also select this to send an email if you don't do this last part it's not going to send an email hit ok now what i'm going to do is for my case for this demonstration i'm going to deselect these two rules and only have this one rule working all right now that's done the second part is go into settings and go to uh, storage go to schedule make sure you have it all if you're doing this ivs rule it all of this area in your case should also be blue the way i did that was i went to settings hit all and i selected intelligent and hit okay you could also do other things like record all the time and motion but i don't have motion set up because if you put too much stress on a camera where you have motion and intelligent happening this is motion detection like it's pixel based it's just too much work then for the camera you shouldn't be doing that However, what you can do is record all the time and on intelligent to get motion alerts. This way it's recording all the time and on intelligent alerts based on that rule you just created and you'll get alerts based on the intelligent rule, not on the general rule. I'm trying to save hard drive space. So I'm gonna leave it this way, hit okay. So that's the second thing you need to do. Third thing you need to do is you need to go into snapshot. If you don't do this, you're not gonna get this little snapshot that I showed you before. You're not gonna get something like this. So here, what I'm gonna do is go under snapshot. I already did this on mine. Go to settings, do the exact same thing, hit all, hit intelligent, hit okay, and then okay again. And your screen should look like this depending on your channel number of your camera. So now you're getting a snapshot recorded on the intelligent rule you created. So that was the third thing we did. Now go fourth thing is record mode. Go under auto here and for the channel that you have, make sure it's selected as auto. Don't have it manual or off. Manual means it records all the time. Off is it's not gonna record at all. Auto means it's gonna record based on that intelligent rule that we select and schedule here. This is what auto is referring to, this kind of rule here for video. And under snapshot, this is gonna be the auto rule. So go back to record mode select auto for mainstream and select on for snapshot substream you can leave off and substream one you can leave off as well because if you don't want a second stream being recorded it's a low res stream i'll show you what that is later uh, but we don't want that recording so that was the, this is the fourth thing we did now everything should be set up and ready to go so i've gotten to a lot of stuff in here i think the most important thing now is to go into for you to real understand that whether you set up your alert correctly or not besides of course getting the email alerts is go into this alarm section from here go to alarm subscription and hit ai detection so what this will do is you'll see your nvr kind of with the web interface kind of waiting it's waiting to see what kind of alerts the camera and nvr are generating and it's in real time showing you a log so it's, i use this as an example because the busy street cars are passing by and i set up that rule i've been getting email messages while recording my screen and you'll see i'm getting a lot of snapshots of cars coming in it it as soon as it detects a car entering it even detected in here right past um the tree uh, facing this way it it sent me a snapshot. So whenever it sees a car now passing by there, it'll send me a snapshot. And then when the event ends, it sends me another email that's without a snapshot. I just said it ended. It will not attach a snapshot to the event end email. So now if I go through all of these emails, you'll see that I've gotten tons of emails with snapshots of the event happening. Obviously cars are not the best way to do this because they move fast. You don't want to really use this for cars, but you do want to use this for people. So let me show you the people example. Someone walked out of the business here. So basically it captured that person walking out and uh, got a screenshot of them. So this is a good demonstration of what you can expect when you set up email motion alerts and how to get that working using an Outlook email address on a premium series security camera recorder by Avalonix. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please do use our contact us tab on cctvcameraworld.com if you purchase from us to get further assistance.
If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.